we'll go from there. Let's uh, let's go ahead and move into our next topic here. Let's talk about Major League Baseball. There is a financial battle coming before we can get baseball back. Uh, Jeff Passan, ESPN, had a a very interesting article over at ESPN today. The title of it is uh, Passan's 20 Questions, Why Financial Battle Over 2020 MLB Season Is About to Get Really, Really Ugly. So the proposal in the return to play thing for the MLB was, and this is broad terms, a 50-50 split of revenue from this season between the owners and the players, an 82-game schedule instead of the standard 162, a mid-June spring training, and then an early July opening day. So basically, you get a couple of weeks, get back into the you know feel of things. A 14-team playoff uh, rather than the typical 10. Games played in home stadiums where allowed. Designated hitters in both the American and National League. Games against only divisional and regional opponents. Um, let's see, AL West teams, for example, play AL West and NL West teams. Uh, expanded rosters from 26 to as many as 30 active players with a 20-man taxi squad of minor league players and prospects. No fans in the stadium to begin the season. And then hopefully they can get them back. Yeah. Uh, now, there's a lot more details in there, obviously. I mean, it's just this is a long document. But the biggest issue here is that when they sent this over to the players, the players basically laughed at it. That's not a good way to start negotiating. Obviously, when you negotiate, you got one guy over here and another guy over here, and then you try and meet somewhere in the middle. Yeah. But when the other guy starts laughing at you immediately, that ain't that ain't good for either side. So they laugh at the 50-50 split. What is the split normally? Uh, the split normally, I mean, who knows? I, I don't know what well, the I mean, actual split is. We should know that. Is. We should have access to that. I think, I think the issue right now is that the players want their they want their contract they want to make what their contract says they are supposed to make so they want to they want to work half the work okay they want to play 82 games instead of, instead of 162 with, with instead no of fans in the stands all right yep. they want to work half but they want to make the whole right that's that's unreasonable that's yeah that's and unreasonable to act like I'm all about negotiating with somebody who can be reasonable, but you can't ask for something unreasonable and then expect to have an adult civil conversation. You just can't do it. No, it's impossible. Um, the, the way that this goes down, so if you look at um, NFL, NBA, NHL, et cetera, they are all under a salary cap, right? So the amount that you can make is based on whatever the salary cap is. Right. And, whatever, so it, and that's based on revenue. Right. That's based on the what, what the comes prior in. year revenue or a three year average revenue or something of that nature. But it's always based on revenue because the NBA is about to have a big problem with theirs. Yeah. The CBA stuff is happening next year. So yeah. that's uh, that's going to be an issue uh, in baseball. There are two streams of revenue. Uh, it says there's local and national. The local includes television contracts, which ranges anywhere from 20 million a year, which the Miami Marlins get to upward of $250 million a year for the Los Angeles Dodgers. It's not set up the same as the NBA or uh, NFL, et cetera, right? It's, it, That's right. Like, this is, if your local market supports the team, the team has money to spend on players. If they don't, then you ain't got money. Like, it is yeah. what it is. So, the way that this all goes down, um, the pandemic has basically turned off the, the revenue spigot, right? There's, it, it, it's not going to account for, that much this season because the the ticket gate is typically 40% of a Major League Baseball team's revenue. If you don't have fans and you don't have 81 games at home, then you got a problem. Now, you're still going to get your television money, but the television money isn't worth that much for Major League Baseball. You don't have massive numbers. Which is still them. 60% of the revenue. It Yeah, it's a lot, but it's not just that. It's, I mean... Let, let's dig into this. All right, so industry-wide revenue for Major League Baseball in 2019 was around $10.7 billion, right? And that's, it could be 10.5, it could be whatever, but it's around that spot. So we'll say $10.5 billion. From there, that 40% of local revenue that comes from ticket sales and merch and concessions and da 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 40% of that is wiped out. That puts you down to $6.4 billion. 
Yeah, that's now, how percentages work. That's sixty percent. Right now, sources have estimated that local television revenue is somewhere between two point two billion and two point five billion. So, the local television stuff, like that's going to be fine. But it, if you're not getting all of the games, you got to cut that in half. So yes. now you're down to five point two billion. National TV money is estimated at one point seven billion a year. And the reason that they're talking about expanding the playoffs is to keep some of that money because you got more postseason games which are worth more money, right? Yes. In that, say you still get around the same because you got more postseason games, and we'll just drop it down to about five billion, right around there. So, so they went from ten billion, to yeah, 5 ten and a half billion. down to five. That's half. Now. It says losses in other areas are almost a given, dropping revenue under $5 billion, which admittedly still seems high, especially if owners are claiming they could lose money this year. Still, it makes the prospect of a 50-50 split with players interesting financially. Player salaries for 2020 are estimated somewhere between $4.2 billion and $4.4 billion. So, right. let's say four point three. Uh, None of this is making sense to me at all. All the numbers make sense, Gary. This is really easy math, and you're yeah. going through detail by detail, but the percentages don't change. We're asking you to take half. That $4.4 billion in player salary, I'm asking you to work half of the work you normally do, okay? Yeah. So that means that I'm asking you to take 2.2 instead of 4.4. We used to make 10. Now we're going to make five. What's half of five? What? $2.5 billion. That's what you're going to get. I don't understand how this is a complicated thing, and I don't think that's unreasonable at all. I don't think it's unreasonable or at all. Or do you not want to play? At the end of the day, do you not want to play? I mean, we'll talk about that with the NBA here in a little bit, but if if it, that's kind of what it sounds like with Major League Baseball, right? With the with the players, it's if you are not willing to come back to make half the money for half the work, uh, one, you're going to lose your fan support very quickly. And and they lost their fan support back in, you know, we were talk, or we watched the last dance the other day. Um now, like, I will tell you that most of the time I'm on the player's side for a lot of things, okay? Yeah, obviously. But this is not reasonable. This is not owners trying to get rich. This is people trying to get things back to normal and continue your product. Because I will tell you that if you miss a season and everybody else doesn't miss a season, there's a whole lot of casual baseball fans that were barely in it that'll be turned off forever and they're not coming back. Your diehards are always going to be there. That's not pro the problem is is you're you're giving the middle finger to those guys too. Oh yeah. 100%. And it's all because you want to get paid for 100% of work when you only do 50% of the work. Everybody in the country understands if I work 3 days a week I make less than if I work 5 days a week. Yes. Everybody seems to get that but these guys. This tells me that the separation between them understanding what the real world is like and 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 what the fantasy world that they get to live in is like is just unrealistic. Yeah. Uh, Matt jumped in on YouTube. Well, we'll start with Ben. Ben said, so there will be no minors this year because they want to cut costs. Uh, yes. Yeah, pretty much. Like, there's going to well, be no, no minor that's, league baseball. That's the thing. Like, the major league players are upset that they're getting half of their pay taken. The minor leagues are getting all of it taken because yeah. they're not going to play at all. We're trying to get some major league baseball back so that there is some kind of revenue because – uh, if there's no money coming in, you can't pay the players, period. No, they're like, not getting anything. Yeah, I mean, and, and you're going to have a bunch. I mean, it's it's well, gonna but it's going to it's going to it's more it's more it's more than that. Think of the market share that you own right now. Baseball is one of the smallest market shares, and if you miss a season and the NBA finds a way to come back, which I don't think they are, but but let's say they come back for the regular season in October, okay. Football comes back normal. Hockey comes back normal in October. If everybody else comes back and you say, you know what, we're going to sit out a season because we don't like this deal, hockey just went here and you just went here. Yeah. You're losing market share. 100%. And you make part of the money you make is based on how popular your sport is. Oh, 100%. 100%. Uh, Matt said, I think it's looking to the future. They're protecting themselves in case management wants to start cutting staff. Uh, it does sound ridiculous. Overall, it's a game for entertainment. If you don't want to play, then don't. Someone will gladly take your spot for ten bucks. And then Ben said, "Minor leagues always get screwed over." Like, it, yeah, we can say that, but I think the biggest thing is that, like, minor leagues are not 
super important. You don't have a bunch of fan interest in those games. It, it hurts like, the minor league system that there's so so many. The fact that there are seven yeah. different layers of minor league system in baseball is ridiculous. If there were three, they'd be a hell of a lot more valuable than if there were seven. Yeah, 100%. But right now, there's there's very rarely does a minor league team have a television contract or anything like that. If you don't have fans coming to the park, yeah. there's no reason to have For the game. To play at all. Yeah. I mean, it's just crazy. Uh, Matt said baseball is already having issues with losing fans. They need to speed the game up, make it exciting. Losing a season, they'll have to scramble to make up for it with another home run, <laughs> another home run chase. Yeah, they'll have to let steroids back in. I mean, <laughs> you know, uh, I, it just uh, Ben said. Well, they just cut forty-two minor league teams for next season. Yeah, that's we talked to Lynn Simon about that. Yeah, but that's that's yeah. a drop in the bucket of what they got. Though. That's the problem. Yeah, I mean, there's there's two hundred. What did he say? Two hundred and fifty some odd minor league teams. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. That's just, insane. That's insane, by the way. Yeah, it's you have it's pretty 30 absurd. realistic teams. Why, why you need 200 minor league teams to staff 30? It's based out across the country in all sorts of different spots. I mean, it's just... I don't get it. I don't get that. But anyway, neither here nor that's a different yeah. argument. I think the players are being unreasonable. Yeah. All I want I people do. to do when you're negotiating, I get negotiations are hard, and I get sometimes they get heated. But at any point in time, when somebody becomes unreasonable, you have to you have to walk away. Yeah. The other side just has to walk away because there is no reasoning with somebody who won't think rationally. It's it it kind of I don't really understand the thought process. Like I, I like to try and think logically, right? My thought process is okay. If there's not as much money coming in, obviously I'm not going to make as much money. That's right. Uh, even if my contract says that I'm supposed to make this much money, all of that is based on the fact that there will actually be money coming in. Like, it's somewhere around what it was when I got hired, right? But hang on now. This is not just we're losing money, and so we need y'all to lose money. This is we're losing money, and we're only asking you to do less. Yeah. Like, we're not like asking you to play 160. That's the difference is we're not losing 40% asking you to still try to get 162 in but still take a 40% pay cut. No, they're saying you're going to have to – the only way the math works is if you take less. Yeah. All right? That means for for you to make half, I'm only going to ask you to work half. Yeah. I think I think that's pretty reasonable. Oh, I think so too. And I, I think, think there's so a too. lot of guys, by the way, on a lot of major league rosters that are going to be pissed off because those guys aren't the multi multi billion. They're not the Miguel Tejada's making thirty million dollars a year and Bryce Harper's making thirty something million dollars a year. Okay, that are being asked to play for piddly fifteen. All right, they're making chump change and they need to go to work. Yeah, and and I think a lot of them would be perfectly fine with going to work, even if if, if their contract is a million. I think they'd be fine. Going for five hundred thousand. That's right. Like I think this right. I this think is hurting too. everybody. Yeah. So I, I don't I don't see I don't see the player side in it at all. There's there is zero part in where I see them saying the entire country is asked to take a pay cut to try to get things back to normal. We're asked to take a pay cut and it's completely unreasonable and we won't do it. We're I mean, laughing we, at it. Not just won't do it. We're gonna laugh at it. Yeah. That's what's absurd. And it may be, like, obviously, a lot of this conversation is going to be happening between the agents and the in the clubs. But, you know, like I said, the thought process for me is that, okay, this organization that employs me, that pays my contract, has to be able to make money in order to pay my contract. If right. there's not that much money coming in, I mean, it, it, I don't think it's going to happen. But it is entirely possible that some of these clubs could file bankruptcy over this. Like, and I don't think it'll happen, but with the amount of money that is on the books for players' salaries, if you overpaid your players and then you are forced to pay them even without a full season or any kind of revenue stream coming in, because if right now there's no TV contract, there's no, you know, there's no games, there's no concessions, there's no merch sales, really. You got the online website, but who's buying baseball merch right now? Nobody. Like, if they start playing games, you will. Yeah, if they start playing games, absolutely. But right now, like, there's no income coming in. 
There's no nothing. So no, I'm really I'm really disappointed in the players on this. I really am. It's uh it's spooky. You are not going to have fan support if you've got 33 plus million people in this country that are on unemployment and you as a baseball player are not willing to take a pay cut. I mean that's absurd. For half the for work. For half the work. I'm not just asking you to take a pay cut for nothing. Yeah, or it, even if it was the full of the job you normally do. Even if it is the full 162, like you would still have to take some kind of a pay cut. It may not be half, but you still have to take some But something. the owners didn't even insult them with that option or no. that idea. No. They sure did. Because I that would have been unreasonable. Uh Matt just brought up an interesting point. He said if the union gets involved, then it goes to the federal level, which will affect other union relations and that could be a mess. Well, yeah, the union this, is involved. That's the only thing that's working here. Yeah, it's the, the players' association. Yeah, so yeah, it's it's a it's a disaster. It's a disaster. So I uh, I hope they get it sorted out because there were a lot of people that were kind of banking on baseball coming back. It don't look. 